Hi, AP Stats folks. Hope you're doing better than me. I'm sick today, so apologize for, like, the grogginess. Um, we are moving on to Section 2 of Chapter 2, which is um, we're going to start talking about normal distributions. So the normal distribution is um, a special type of a density curve, um, and it's very important because pretty much the rest of the year we're going to be using the standard normal curve. Um, if you have data, the nice thing about the normal curve is that if you have data that follows an approximately normal curve, you can actually know a lot of information about that data set. Um, so we're just going to kind of like go over the basics first um, and then, you know, go on from there. Um, so uh, first we're going to talk about what the 6895 99.7 rule is. Um, this is also called the empirical rule. So you'll see that on the notes here, the empirical rule. If I use the term empirical rule, you should know that it's the same as the 6899 9599.7 rule. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about um, how to use that rule, the empirical rule, to calculate um, proportional values within a specific interval um, on a normal curve, and then um, determine the z-score from the percentile. So um, normal curves are just a special kind of density curve. Um, and the important properties of the normal curve is that, um, so there's a couple things. So one is that it's um, symmetric. Uh, which means the mean and the median are um, smack dab in the middle, um, right? It's a density curve, so the area underneath it is 1 um, or 100%, and that just means that like 100% of the data lies underneath the curve. Um, so let me write that stuff down quick for you. All right, so um, additionally, it, it should, it always is unimodal, um, so one, um, one mode, and bell-shaped. Um, other things that are um, not as obvious from the diagram um, is that you um, any normal curve can be described um, solely by the mean and the standard deviation. And if you have those two things, you know what the curve looks like. And well, I guess if you know the mean and you know the standard deviation and you know that it's normal, um, then you know like everything about the curve. Um, shorthand, um, it can be written as um, n and then parentheses with the mean and standard deviation. So if I have a approximately normal curve, I would write approximately normal and maybe the mean is 10 and a standard deviation is 3. Um, I could write that this way um, and you should know that that's that I mean it's approximately normal, mean of 10, standard deviation of 3. Obviously because it is a density curve, the area under the curve should be equal to 1. So if I were to calculate the total area under this curve, um, you would get the area to be 1. Um, and then if I was curious, or 100% of the data, and if you were in particular looking on a, a specific interval, so say I wanted to know like what percent of the data points lie between these two values, between like three and five, let's pretend for a moment, and I want to know what percent of the values lie between that, um, those two values, all I have to do is find the area under the curve, and that is proportional to um, the number of observations uh, that you see between three and five. Um, so yeah, okay, so that's what that last part means. Um, okay, so the last thing, like, physically about the curve um, is that um, the, the area or the spot where um, the curve changes from concave down, so here's concave down, right? This is like cereal spilling on the floor because your cup is facing down. That's concave down. And then here... Um, is concave up and your cereal is safe and sound in its bowl. <laughs> um, the point at which it changes from concave down to concave up, which is like right here, 
is one standard deviation away from the mean. Um, so that kind of gives you a good like visual and reference point. So like if I um, so that you can like label your x-axis accordingly. Okay, the empirical rule has to do with um, the percentages um, of values within a certain region um, on any normal curve. Okay, this only applies to normal curves, right? Remember that not all normal curves are density curves. Uh, sorry, not all density curves are normal curves. Um, so this only applies if you have a normal curve. Um, but the idea is, um, so if you see this distance here is one standard deviation above the mean. So this x value right here is mu plus whatever our standard deviation is. And then if I go over one to the left, that's mu minus a standard deviation. So what the empirical rule says is that within one standard deviation of the mean, so that's this area here, there's approximately 68% of the data. Now, if you were to go two standard deviations away from the mean, so subtract another standard deviation, which would be about here and about here, but two standard deviations away, you have 95% of the data. So here is 95% of the data. Hence its shorthand name here, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And I bet you can guess what the 99.7 rule is. Um, it says that um, within three standard deviations of the mean, you have 99.7% of the data. So if I go out one more standard deviation here and over here, then in between those two values, you have 99.7% of the data, um, which means if you go three standard deviations out, you have approximately 0.3% um, of the data left in the tails. Um, so with this information, you can actually kind of figure out um, how much data lies, uh, how much data is like between two values. So I'll show you some examples um, of like how to figure that out. Okay. Um, so the standard normal distribution is a special kind of a normal distribution. Um, and it's just one that has a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. So what's really nice about this curve is that you can actually take any data set um, and make it look like this curve. And basically what you're doing is you're like transforming the data so that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Um, and the way you would do that is subtract the mean and then divide by whatever the standard deviation is, um, which is in fact the z-score which we learned in like the last last video. Um, and so the idea is like all of these values, like if you were to find um, a point that has this, you know, like, I don't know, an X value here of 1.5, that's actually 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. Um, and so if you have the standard normal curve, um, you can find out how many standard deviations above or below the mean that data point is very quickly because um, these are all the z-scores um, at the bottom here. And just because it's like, in order to get this curve, you would need to take, um, like transform all of the data into their z-scores for that data set. Okay, um, so here are three examples. Um, go ahead and try those using the empirical rule um, and then I will go over them. Just check to make sure that you understand it. Okay, so to answer these questions, so one is just like sketching the curve. So your mean is 64.5. You add 2.5 to each. Hello, what are you doing here? Hey, dog. Can you come here? Say hi. Come in. Hi, camera. Hi, dog. She's very cute. She likes to snuggle. Anyways. <laughs> So, um, you would want to use the empirical rule to do um, two and three. Um, and, you know, I got these points by adding a standard deviation to each one um, or subtracting on the left side. Um, so then it, for two, I'm looking at what percent of women have heights greater than 67 inches. So um, I marked my, I drew another curve um, and then I shaded the area that I'm interested in. So. Um, especially right now, um, 
I know it's a pain, but like for every single problem, I'm probably going to make you write or draw a curve, draw the normal curve, um, and then shade the area that you want. Because that's the best way to like visually understand what you're actually finding. Um, because the area under the curve here um, will get you the percent of women um, who have heights greater than 67 inches. So you can use the um, empirical rule um, for both of these situations. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can figure it out. Um, so what I probably would do is, um, I don't know, I, I know that 68% of the um, data lies between here and here. Um, and then 95% between here and here, um, which means, well, okay, hold on, let me write it out. Okay, so I found an easier way to do it. Sorry, my brain's not working well today. Um, so if you know the mean, um, split the data in half, that means 50% of the data is above the mean and 50% is below the mean. This is only true because of the, um, uh, the symmetric curve, um, but, since it's symmetric, you have 50% of the data above, which would mean that this area that's shaded is 50% minus this little space here. And since from one standard deviation, there's 68% of the data, that means this is half of that. So that's 34. So the area left is 50% minus 34%, which is 16%. Um, okay, now we try number three. So for this one, um, again, there's a lot of different ways you can figure it out. You know that this is 68% of the data. You can figure out this is 13.5 and this is like, I don't know, three, 95 to 97 is um, 2%, this is another approximately 1%. You can like add those up. Um, or you know that above, um, three standard deviations and below stand three standard deviations, there's only 0.3% of the data left. So that means that right here in this tail, there's half of 0.3%, so 0.15% of the data. And then we also know um, that from the mean over, there's 50%. So basically this area, is 50% minus 0.15, and then I need to add this last piece, this 30, and we know that from the last problem that that area is 34%. So you should get about 83.85%. Um, you could also do this by taking 100 and subtracting the 0.3% minus like these two pieces. That would also be fine. There's a lot of different ways you can solve those. And that's about it for our intro um, to normal curves. Um, Ooh, determining the z-score from a percentile. I didn't do that yet. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so you can also um, do something like do it the opposite way, where like maybe I give you a percentile um, and say, oh, so and so was in the ninety-fifth percentile, um, and you would need to be able to kind of figure out. Um, what their score was, um, or in this case, what their height was. So let me make up an example for you. Okay, here's three more examples for you to try real quick, just to connect them to the z-scores, and there are your answers. Um, so the yeah, percentile, right, you would want to know what percent are below 69.5%, so you do it the same way as before, find the area. Um, five is just a z-score, so x minus the mean divided by standard deviation. You could also see this because, like, 69.5 is exactly two standard deviations above the mean. Um, so you could have figured that out without even finding the z-score. Um, and then 67 is one standard deviation above the mean, um, which is 84%, because you've got 50% up to here, and then another 34% 34, 34 here. Okay? And that's about it for today. Cool. Have a good day. Hope you guys are doing great.